Hello strangers and friends, and welcome back to lucky episode 13 of Sometimes I Make Things. Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of butterfly. Like I said, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Sometimes I make things where I primarily talk about knitting. Sometimes some other things work their way in. My name is Grace and I go by she, her pronouns. And today we are going to be looking at the state of my stash. So as many people have probably heard about or are thinking about themselves, a lot of people make the resolution in the new year to only knit from stash or to knit more from stash. And I am someone who fits into that category. So stash, if you're not familiar, is yarn that you already own and have in your possession. A lot of my yarn I bought, I'm looking over here because I have it laid out on a beautiful table, it's lovely. Uh, a lot of the yarn that I have purchased in the past, I have had specific patterns in mind. I don't tend to buy yarn unless I have something in mind for it. And there are some folks who love to have a massive stash. I am someone who gets a little stressed out though when my stash starts getting large, just because I start thinking I have all these things I have to do or this money that I've spent that I'm not um, making the most out of. So for me, um, this is a goal that I've had in previous years. It's a little hit or miss. Your girl loves to spend money on yarn. Um, but we're going to do our best this year. So part of the reason why I wanted to make this particular video is I want to show what I have available and kind of treat it like a time capsule. So at the end of this year, maybe I can do a part two follow up video and I can show um, a comparison of what I wanted to make, what I did make um, versus maybe what never got touched. And maybe that'll tell me something about what kind of yarn I should focus buying in the future. What do I enjoy using? What colors really draw me out? So yeah, we'll see how that all goes. Before we begin, of course, need to tell you what I'm drinking. Today, I'm in a little bit of a rush. I have the house to myself for a bit while dad takes the dog for a walk, the beautiful red dog Rouge. Um, so I'm just drinking some quick and easy bagged green tea because green tea is always good. Also, before I get into the yarn loveliness, today I am wearing my Sheer V sweater by Jessie May. And I knit this in Knit Picks palette and Knit Picks a loft in the color Hyacinth and Penny Royal. Yes, uh, this is one of my favorite sweat. I mean, Pretty much every sweater I made last year is a favorite sweater. Um, but I'm very happy with the fit of this. I think the color looks quite nice on me and yeah, very comfy, very soft. And uh, the sleeves can be a little impractical at dinner time, but when you're not eating food, they're excellent. So let's get into the yarn now. To get things started, I was thinking of doing stuff kind of in a season. So what do I want to do in the winter, the spring, the summer, etc. No hard and fast rules. And these are general ideas for the year. I would love it if I could get through all of these. Um, but what I have in front of me is enough to keep me busy for the whole year knitting, I'm fairly certain. Um, and it's not unlikely that I'll get distracted by other pretty shiny things. So bear with me. So. To start off with um, in February, because January, if you recall from my last video, I'm working on my uh, unfinished objects, works in progress from 2022, and I'm trying to get those done as much as possible, uh, just so I can feel good about starting something new in February. January is kind of my, my close off month, if you will. I'm not finishing much, but I'm working on it. So the first thing that I want to cast on in February is a project I have been super excited about. Um, for over a year, I just haven't had the right pattern, the right timing, etc, etc. But it's happening February 1st, I'm casting this thing on. And it is a fisherman cable sweater. So the pattern I finally landed on is the Honeycomb Erin, which is a pattern put out by Peyton's. Also, quick disclaimer, I'm probably not going to remember every pattern designer's name off the top of my head, so I'm going to put everything in um, a banner bar at the bottom of the screen so everyone gets referenced and everybody gets their credit. Um, so I'm putting that out as a disclaimer firsthand. So I am going to be using the wonderfully rustic Lion Brands Fisherman's Wool. 
I got this from a budget store in my province, so it costs a little bit less. I believe it was $88 worth of wool that I've bought, so I have six skeins of this, and each of these are 318 meters, so I'm going to have tons and stuff left over, so maybe I can make a pair of matching mittens or a hat. We'll see. Um, I've really wanted to do a cabled sweater for a while. It's a really classic knit, and the thing with that is I want to do a seamed cabled pullover. Classic, classic, classic. Um, a lot of people say they hate seaming, but I haven't actually done a fully seamed project yet, so I'm doing it to see if I hate it or not, because who knows? Maybe I really like seamed sweaters. Also, there's some benefits with seaming a sweater that gives it a little bit more structure, strength, longevity. So that's going to be my big project. I'm probably going to have that going through most of the year, if not going right into 2024. We'll see. Um, but that's my behemoth project of the year. So I want to start that as soon as possible and get going on it. Um, another project that I have planned for the winter period, this is a pattern I've already purchased, and it is the Pelto Collar by Jenny Ansa. And I'm going to use this lovely, soft merino cashmere nylon and mohair silk combo from Leo and Roxy. This color is a nice kind of gray beige. It almost has maybe a slight green undertone. It's kind of hard for me to qualify the yarn. Um, but this is an exclusive colorway to a yarn shop that is my favorite in Ontario called The Knitting Loft. Uh, I believe it's called Angie. It's named after one of the workers. Um, so the Pelto collar is this wonderful um, dip stitch brioche uh, turtleneck dicky. And every time I, I saw it for the first time and I immediately fell in love with it. It was the first pattern of Jenny's that I ever saw and I bought it and I'm so excited to make it. And I bought this yarn with that specific intention. Um, I think it's going to be so soft and light and then merino cashmere nylon, mohair silk. It's just going to be such a luxury to wear. So that one's really high on my list to cast on as soon as possible. I think it'll be a nice winter project um, to have done before the spring comes along. So with those two projects, probably by the time I'm getting done on them or got some progress going, the spring's going to start happening. Um, usually spring weather starts popping up late April, early May, um, so we'll see what the progress is like there. Um, but I have quite a few ideas involved for the spring period. The first one is the Earth and Air sweater by James N. Watts. And for that, I have this very funky combination of pure white Cascade 220 and this vibrant, vibrant purple pink from um, Pew Pew Die Die. Pew pew die die, die die pew pew. I cannot remember. Skipped Threads is the name of the uh, yarn store the dyer is associated with. And I just thought the brioche, the worsted lace brioche mix would look so cool with these um, very bright um, colors put together. So I'm not someone who wears a lot of white and I'm not someone who wears a lot of neon purple either. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how this combo goes. I still am gonna do a gauge swatch before I decide if this is really the color combo I want but I feel like this just has tons of promise. I got the Earth and Air pullover as a gift pattern after doing the Granny's Attic socks test knit for James. So I, I wanna make that pattern this year and I think that'd be a nice kind of circular effect of a test knit I did in 2022 and I'm getting to do the gift pattern in 2023. Also for spring and also test knit related, I want to make the pearl pouch by Tori Yu. And I got that pattern as a thank you for completing Tori's Manhattan bulky pattern test knit, um, which is great. Such a win-win, two wonderful patterns. I am thinking I'm going to use this incredible highlighter yellow from Knit Picks. It's in Swish Worsted, so that's 100% merino yarn. And I just think the pearl pouch would be so funky and stand out in these. A nice thing to carry a sock project around in. And I think I want to get like a thick off-white woven cotton cord as the jaw draw string and we'll see i might try to do some sort of fabric lining just so that it's reinforced a little bit on the inside i haven't done any sewing yet sewing is something i really want to learn this year it's part of my eternal goals <laughs> to learn how to sew um but for now pearl pouch bag um this one is kind of like up for potentially changing it into um, I could go for a hat with this. I don't know if it would be a little too out there. I do love my neon yellows though, so 
we'll see. Um, but I think this would make a really fun accessory. So most likely it's going to be the pearl pouch, but there is a possibility this one will slide into something else. But 100% I want to make a pearl pouch this year, no matter what color I end up doing it in. Also for spring, I have some spring socks lined up. I got this lovely um, blue-green minty uh, BFL from the Knitting Loft. They had it on sale. Um, I'm not really familiar with the brand, Dyed by Dells, but they're from Montreal, apparently. Um, and yeah, I think this will be very nice. I've never used BFL before, um, and I've heard wonderful things about their sock, um, the wool's capacity for making socks. It's an 80-20. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. I think this would be very fun to do a cabled pair of socks and um, also lace. I'm really open-minded, but just specifically, I got this because it's good for socks and I really want to up my sock game this year. Um, I just figure I really enjoy knitting socks and I love wearing socks. So I think I want to dedicate a little more time and space in my life to making them because they are the knits that I wear the most um, and they're so portable. Big team sock girl over here. So yeah, if you have any interesting cable or lace pattern suggestions, I'm pretty open. I don't think I want to do anything with bobbles, just because I can see bobbles being a little annoying with shoes. So something that can go in shoes because I like to wear my wool socks out. Next up, we're going to move more into my summer knitting plans, and they are pretty broad. <laughs> so where to begin? Um, my first bit here is I have quite a few um, summer tops that I want to make and usually they take me a while to knit. I don't know why summer tops just seem to linger when I'm working on them, but I've got a couple planned this year so we'll see if I can make my way through them. Um, I'm really embracing the plant yarns this year. Uh, first up I have this lovely batch of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and this is in the color Sunflower. And this represents about a thousand meters here, 250 meters per ball. Um, and what I wanna make with this is one of Knitting for Olive's own patterns, the Olive Top. It's this wonderful, uh, I, I don't know if it's lace or cable, I don't really know how to classify the stitch, but it's basically these shaped leaf patterns um, all throughout the top. And it's a simple V-neck on the front and the back. Um, it's mostly just that pattern, that texture is what uh, I'm really looking for there. So because that stitch does take up quite a bit of yarn, I'm hoping this will be enough to make it. Um, it's a possibility I might need to buy another skein, but I'm really hoping to make it work with this amount because a thousand meters should be enough. Uh, it has a nice I-cord straps as well, so I think it's going to be a really nice piece. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to cast this one on, if this will be my first one or not, but uh, this is definitely a pattern that I would like to have, be able to wear for the summer. The other summer top pattern I have in mind is another one by the lovely Jenny Ansa, which is whoop, her Lupini Tuff. And this yarn wants to disobey me. It is falling apart constantly. <laughs> Uh, but this is Love Tan by Camo Rose. It's a linen yarn in a chainette style, and I'm really liking the feel of this yarn. It has that right crunch that I want from a plant yarn, and I can tell it's going to soften up nicely. Um, someone on the Ravelry project pages used this exact yarn, and I quite liked the effect that it gave off. So um, again, it's a simple v-neck front and back. The strap design is different, plain knit. And then it has bobbles and lace around the hem to give an effect of flowers and leaves and it's so lovely. So that's one that I'm very excited about as well. The third summer top that I want to make this year is by Jessie May, the Diaphanous Raglan, but this time I want to make it short sleeve with a nice ruffle effect on the edge of the sleeve. And for that I have this fantastic combination of black yarns. Um, these skeins here are Pima Bold by Camo Rose and this one on the end. I am blanking on the name of the yarn, but I'm going to put it in the down bar and it is Tencel, which is very soft and light. Um, together, I think these would be fantastic. Um, I actually tried to knit this top last year, but I ran into some problems with my work in progress. But basically, this is the corpse of my whip. Um, it's not really worth trying to unwind it and salvage the yarn at this point. Just the way the top is constructed, it's quite difficult to frog it. 
Um, but basically, I had the tent cell alone, tent cell alone as um, my kind of the section you do mohair in, and then I was using the cotton on the edges, and I really like both of them. They feel lovely. Um, maybe I can show it here. But the problem with it is, with the tencel, it snags incredibly easily, and then you can just pull it. Like, that took absolutely nothing. Um, so this originally happened, I had a zippered project bag, and it just tore it, basically. So you get these welts that'll run through the tencel. It just doesn't have the fiber attributes to cling to itself. So I don't want to spend hours and hours knitting this top and then have it snag on like a tree branch or someone's zipper or a ring. Um, and then the top is basically ruined because I tried fixing it, um, like undoing that pull, and it's very difficult. So I think what I'm going to do instead of having that separate uh, section, I think it looks very nice, but it's just not practical. Um, I'm going to knit the tencel and the cotton together. So I'm going to hold them double, and I think that'll lend the silkiness of the tencel with the softness of the cotton, and I think they'll work together better than they could have alone. So I'm not going to have as much of a sheer window on the sleeves, um, but I want to use the yarn, and I think this is the way that makes the most sense. So please cross your fingers for me that it's not a disaster like this one was, because while I was knitting it, um, it was like my favorite whip that I'd had in a long time. This yarn uh, is a delight to work with and the pattern is very fun. And I just think a black summer top would be very cute and very classy. So I want it. <laughs> so please send me all the good energy for that one because I think it's going to be a bit of a mental trial if it doesn't go well for me. While I imagine that those three summer top patterns are going to keep me quite busy through the summertime, if not earlier in the, in the year, I do have a little extra project that I think will be fun to do for the summertime, and it's another pair of socks, and it's going to be a pair of shorties in these fantastic colors by Yawal. So these are 75-25 wool and nylon, and I think there is a fantastic amount of contrast between these two skeins, the static of the black and the white, and the neon pop of the yellow. I really want to do shorty colorwork socks, very similar to um, the pair that I shared in my last video, um, kind of had my own color work um, around the arch of the foot and around the toe to kind of blend the colors together. Um, and with that, I just really want to show off the contrast between these yarns. These are a very, very thin sock yarn, so I think that's why they would make a good pair of summer socks, despite being a wool base. Wool is quite warm, um, but I still think they're going to have excellent breathability, and um, they'll work very well for a pair of shorties. Also, just a limited amount of yarn as well. Um, I wouldn't want to run out, so these are going to be a cute pair of shorties. At this point, we're probably moving more into fall weather, and I've got some excellent projects lined up for the latter part of the year. Now, this is also on the sock front. I have quite a few socks planned this year, uh, but I have this fantastic skein of Cat's Kettle hand-painted yarns. I won this yarn in a giveaway that Elise made ran in late 2021, and the color is called Crackle. And it's just these wonderful mix of light and deep reds. There's some speckling of orange and black, very much like a fire. And I can just imagine the leaves turning all beautiful shades and working on these wonderful fiery socks. So again, don't have a pattern picked out. Maybe the cup of tea socks would work very well with this yarn. Um, but I'm pretty open to ideas on this front as well. It's a 75-25, so I think it would hold up quite well um, to being used as a sock yarn, and the yarn itself is very soft, so I think these would be an absolute treat to wear on my feet. Now, this next project is also a bit ambiguous, but I know I want to use this yarn in 2023 if I can, and it's either going to be socks or a shawl, but I have this, it's kind of a gradient, from Knit Picks. These are Knit Picks Hawthorne. I won this skein and this skein in that same giveaway that I won the previous red skein in, and the middle one I purchased late in 2022 as part of a Black Friday sale. These colors are Newport hand-painted 
Mount Scott and Klamath Falls. So they have a nice crisp feel to them. They're not as soft as other um, yarns that I have this year. That's why I think they'd be really good for socks. And I like the idea of thick banded striped socks, like maybe um, seven rows or 10 rows of color um, going down this way, this way, etc. cetera. Um, but I haven't made any like thick stripy socks yet. So I think this would be um, good yarn for that. But I would have a fair amount of yarn left over if I made socks out of these three skeins. So um, that's why I was also thinking maybe a shawl could be a fun thing to do with some bobble work and color work, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, these ones, I'm not 100% sure, but I think these would be an excellent project for fall with their deep moody colors. The next um, pattern yarn combo I want to talk about is a pair of fingerless gloves, which I haven't knit fingerless gloves before, but it's something that I'm really looking forward to doing this year if I can. I got these two wonderful skeins from Wabi Sabi in Ottawa when I went to visit my friend Corinne in early 2022, and I think they have a beautiful contrast. I love this kind of shade of a purpley blue. Um, where it's a bit ambiguous which way the color is leaning. And then this is just the most serene oatmeal color. Um, and together, I just think they give a very calming, beautiful um, vibe. <laughs> so these might be ones that I end up getting ex too excited to wait for and cast on in the spring, because even uh, fingerless mittens are great for the spring or for the early fall. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the designer, but I'm going to put her right down here. Um, but I'm thinking of making the underwing mittens. Um, the underwing mittens are a very popular pattern, um, so you may be familiar with them already. Um, but that's what I'm aiming to do with this one. If I don't end up going with the underwing mittens, I still know for sure I want to make a pattern by that designer because she has some fantastic fingerless mitts. She has one of Crane's that I think are very nice, so I could... It's either going to be the moths or the cranes with this particular combo of yarn. If I do end up doing the underwing mittens, I really like the idea of using leftovers of, oops, <laughs> grabbed the wrong skein, leftovers of this neon yellow for the highlights on the moths, um, because I just think that would be a really fun, um, exciting pop of neon to add into this very calm, otherwise pretty neutral combo. I have one last pattern yarn combo plan for 2023 and that is a sweater and it's meant to be a pretty budget friendly sweater but i have this lovely soft yarn from lion brand it's called touch of alpaca and i want to make the bay pullover by jacqueline c's lack this is a lovely classic dolman pattern um, and i already have it purchased it is ready to go and i like the idea of um wearing this like for a quiet winter evening even like summer evenings when there can be a little coolness in the air and you're sitting by a bonfire with friends um i can see the sweater fitting into my life in a lot of ways um and part of that is that i want to have a sweater that i'm not afraid to go live my life in um when a sweater costs like 120 dollars, i can't help but to be a little bit precious about it it's just something i can't not do so that's why I wanted to knit this very classic pattern in a budget-friendly yarn. So I got this yarn at the same time that I got the Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video um, from that budget-friendly location. So all in all of the skeins that I purchased came out to about $35 Canadian, which is very reasonable for a sweater, even if you're buying it ready-made. Um, so this yarn still has a little bit of luxury to it. It is mostly out um sorry mostly acrylic and then a little bit of alpaca mixed in um so i think the alpaca is just going to help hold everything together nicely and maintain that softness but acrylic is going to be very hard wearing um so yeah we're going to see how this one goes i don't often knit with acrylic and that's not to say whether or not i like it or not i just haven't used it much so I can't really say how I feel about it um, but based on holding this yarn it feels fantastic and I'm looking forward to using it and I think it'll make for a very pleasant sweater to wear so that's kind of my foray into a more budget-friendly hard-wearing option for myself I know that I love wool um, but it's nice to expand your horizons a little bit so yeah that one I think is going to be a wonderful sweater. So I'm thinking this is probably going to be my 
calm, soothing winter cast on. Um, it's mostly stockinette with some cool shaping involved, and I think it'll be a nice way to end the year with doing this sweater. So there you have it. Those are my approximate plans to knit from stash in the year 2023. And as you could see, there is lots of projects for me to work on. Um, given the amount of time that I have available in my life for knitting and also how fast of a knitter I am, this is definitely enough to keep me busy for the whole year, but pretty shiny things come up and are distracting. So um, if you're planning to knit from stash this year, I'd love to hear what are some of the projects and patterns that you're really excited to uh, finally knit um, or crochet. And in general, what are you looking forward to making in 2023? Are you planning to knit from stash or are you planning to go rogue and buy everything and anything that you like? Let me know. Anyway, until next time, friends, take care, be well, and happy 2023. Today was big scatterbrain energy. I can't believe I completely forgot to mention this, but I want to reorganize my yarn shelf that I have in my bedroom to represent these, um, whoop, <laughs> these patterns and yarn combinations that I want to do this year. So I took a clip of the before of what my yarn wall looks like, or yarn cabinet looks like right now, and then I'm going to pop in an after to show you what it looks like representing what I want to make in 2023.